Uh, welcome to St James's. Uh, wherever you are, I'm in Hampton Hill. You may be near or you may be far. Or whenever you're watching, whether you're watching live on Sunday morning or later in the day or at another time. It's great to have you with us. If you are watching live on Sunday morning on Facebook, then I'd encourage you to say you're here uh, to greet one another in the comments box on the side of the page. This is the second Sunday in Easter, the Sunday when we celebrate the belief of Thomas in the risen Christ. Let's greet one another in his name. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! So we're going to sing our first song which tells us a little of the ministry of Jesus but ends up by reminding us that Jesus is the Lord of the dance, the Lord of life. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing to God's glory.
the collect of the second Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts, that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. Now Jackie is going to read to us our gospel uh, for this morning and then Scott is going to preach after that. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, <clears throat> the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them. And he said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Greetings from my bedroom. Much like the disciples, I am here with the door closed, but not for fear of the Jews, but for fear of the coronavirus. That's all that seems to be on the news now wake up to the coronavirus, go to sleep worrying about what's going on. And it confronts us in a way that we haven't been confronted much with recently. I was recently reading a book that was discussing the sociology of death, particularly its evolution over the past few centuries. And the author discusses the fact that in about the last generation there's been a huge paradigm shift where we are no longer seeing death as a communal activity but as something that is relegated to the margins we send people to die not in their homes but in hospitals 
away from sight. People are not allowed to overly mourn because it's bringing the rest of us down. Instead, we focus on life. But the coronavirus has been upsetting that for us. Every day I wake up and look and see the new death totals, seeing how many people are not only dying here, but in the United States. And we see that those places where we send people to die, nursing homes, hospitals, are becoming flooded, overwhelmed, such that we are now confronted with it as part of our lives. This taboo that we have in place over death has been crossed. And the rest of us are in quarantine. We're no longer able to do the things that the living do. Instead, we are confined to small spaces, almost as if we are reserved for death. All of these cultural taboos surrounding life and death and who we are as living beings are being crossed. And the text that we're looking at today with Jesus' resurrection appearances to the disciples and to Thomas helps us reorient the way we think about death. It fundamentally overturns this idea, this taboo, certain aspects of what we think of as being part of the experience of death. In this, Jesus is risen. He died, but he's back. All the disciples are gathered, except for Thomas in the first instance. But all of them, not just Thomas, but all the disciples, require seeing in order to believe. Because Jesus has died, it doesn't make sense that he has come back to life. And Thomas, his episode is quite interesting. He shows us that this resurrection, the idea that Jesus di died but didn't stay there, is fundamental to who we are as believers in Christ. Thomas says, I will not believe unless I see. Now, the other disciples didn't put it that starkly, but of course they did not believe until they saw. They still required that seeing. But we often think of Thomas as the doubter. But the word here is not doubting. It is unbelieving, not believing. And when Jesus appears to Thomas, he says, do not be a non-believer, but believe. And we have one of the most, the highest Christological statements in all of the Bible. Thomas, upon seeing the wounds in Jesus' hands and his side, he says, my Lord and my God. Now within this whole experience of Jesus meeting the disciples, before he meets with Thomas, he breathes on them and gives them the Holy Spirit, an interesting Johannine Pentecost, where the disciples now receive their commission to go and tell people about Jesus' being risen. And they receive the one that Jesus promised to send after he had ascended. Now, there's so much we could take from this passage. It is teaching us more than we can unpack in just a few minutes. But I want to bring it up around to what, what we can learn about our situation today in quarantine, being confronted with death day in and day out. What can we learn or our situation from this passage. 
and it fundamentally reorients our ideas of death. What we see here is that death is not the hard barrier we perceive. It's permeable. Jesus died. He came back to life. In belief in that, we, we are promised eternal life so that death itself is not a final blow to who we are. It is merely a part of our life, which is not temporal, but eternal. Another fascinating thing that this tells us about those of us in quarantine is that these barriers, even the barrier of death, does not hinder our Christian fellowship. Notice here that the disciples are gathered behind a locked door after Jesus had died. And Jesus appears and says, peace be with you. Even death does not hinder our Christian fellowship. And he gave us the Holy Spirit, which enables an even wider idea of our common communion. This, is, this passage is really pointing at, in some form, an ancient doctrine that is part of the Apostles' Creed called the Communion of Saints. Now, what this is usually brought to talk about is that those believers who are alive are fellowshipping even with those who have died. But it's even broader than that. And we see that in the giving of the Holy Spirit. And we see, and it's pointed to in this passage, in that death does not bear, pose a barrier to our fellowship. But even to all those believers that are alive, though we are apart, we are in common fellowship with each other. And we get to experience that in a new way now that we have the internet, now that many of us are watching this being broadcast at the same time. We get to experience this fellowship in a new way through our technology. But even if we did not have it, we would still have our fellowship with one another through the Holy Spirit. Though we are scattered, we are still gathered. The physical presence does not negate our being in Christ. And though we are apart, we are united with one another through our worship of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Nick's going to lead our prayers. O oh Lord, you appeared to your disciples and brought them peace. In these testing times, may we who have not seen believe and trust in you too. Bring us through our troubles to proclaim you as Lord and God. O oh Lord, your resurrection broke the hold of death. May your church rejoice in your presence and life-giving spirit, filling us with life and new hope. We pray for Derek, Jackie, Julian and Sylvie as they find new ways of telling us the good news. Lord, in your healing mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we bring to you our nation our world, transformed in weeks from one of hope to one of fear. But as Christians, we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, 
whatever it takes, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Lord, in your healing mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, as we sit at home, remind us that we are never separated from your love. We pray for the isolated and housebound in our local community, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, in your healing mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength. Lord, in your healing mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you were handed over and crucified for our salvation. Gather all who died trusting in you into your everlasting kingdom. We think especially of Margaret Taylor and Daphne Roby, who both died recently. And we pray for them and their families at this difficult time. We also pray for the doctors and nurses who've lost their lives this week while trying to save others, and anyone known just to us. Lord, in your healing mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you, Lord, the love of our hearts as we recall the extent of your love for us, which understands our frailty and reaches out to us where we are. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before our communion time, we're going to sing Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. In your loving care you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Let us pray. Lord God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And together we pray. Thanks be to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We are raised to new life in Christ. Go in his peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here whenever it is and wherever you are. We actually know that some people have put off coming to physical church. Maybe it's getting to a place at time, what to wear, where to sit, what to do. And I think we're finding that online church might be less frightening. So if you've ever invited someone to come to church and they made excuses, perhaps ask them to come to this as a way of beginning at this opportunity 
this time might be a good time for them to begin. So we're going to carry on with Facebook Live at 9.30 on Sundays and available afterwards on Facebook or YouTube. There are always technical problems. I lost sound when I first recorded this and I had to re-record some of it and that's why I'm doing something different now. And there have been very puzzling problems with our audio programme that I do not understand. So if you signed up and struggled last week to uh, get the download, then look on the email on Monday and hopefully in a new situation, a new setting, things will be better. Just to remind you that if you're in a situation where children's Bible stories are useful to you, then Danny is producing two videos each week on our Facebook page. Uh, so we know that we're going to have a national lockdown for another three weeks and it may be very unlikely that there will be normal church for a long time after that. So we've been thinking about how we can enrich, fill out what we are doing just to begin with at the beginning of the lockdown period. Um, and we all like coffee together. I'm not sure if I'm not entirely sure that it's possible uh, to uh, have coffee after a live stream. I'm not sure how that works. But how about popping over to the vicarage on Thursday morning for a coffee? Of course, I don't mean physically come to the vicarage, but using the ubiquitous Zoom. Uh, just drop in and catch up with one another. There was a link in the Saturday email. Uh, click on that and it will take you to, on Thursday. Click on that on Thursday and join me for a cuppa and a chat. Similarly, small groups have been important. Rather sadly, our Lent group was just getting going when it was interrupted by the shutdown. So how about thinking about prayer more deeply? Can't go out, but we can use the space that we might have to go deeper. There's a great video course put together by a guy called Pete Gregg. Uh, we're going to use their video course with discussion afterwards and we'll use Zoom as normal, I suppose we say these days. Uh, so the link was in the email last week and it'll be in the email coming up. And Scott is work, working on something too uh, that he can offer, perhaps on a Thursday evening. So watch this space. Lastly, you may have heard the sad news of the death of two long-standing members of St James. Daphne Roby, who lived in St James's Avenue, and she died in Laurel Dean. And if you visited with me over the last year to Laurel Dean for her services, you probably remember her as quite lively or very confused. But someone who most of us remember is Margaret Taylor. Uh, Margaret and David have been core members of this church for decades. Margaret, for example, was church warden for a time. Someone told me that when she came to St James first of all with her small children, it was Margaret who went out of her way to welcome her and make her feel at home then and thereafter. Now, uh, she hasn't been well for quite a while, and not really since I've been here, so it's three and a half years, and she died this week in her care home. Now, because of the COVID-19 situation, a funeral at the Krem can only have 10 people. So the service for Margaret will be just for the family in the first instance uh, and we hope there'll be another opportunity to give thanks to God for her life uh, once the situation has changed. Last week, lastly we come to the sharing of the peace. Remember that as well as sharing the peace uh, with your screen, why not reach out to someone, uh, someone else, someone at St James's or a neighbour or a friend or a relative and bless them with God's peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless and keep you this week. Amen.